dear students of fourth year, uh, welcome to a lecture. Uh, it is by me, Dr. Kamran Chaudhary, ENT department, and it is about a very common cause of uh, vertigo. Uh, it's called benign proximal positional vertigo. I used to have a patient come to me with the ultimate diagnosis of benign positional vertigo. Why? Because the vertigo, the feeling of imbalance, the feeling of rotation in a very busy clinics, take a lot of uh, uh, examination, very much point to elaborate in the history, and then the investigation, and then you have to consult the author, specialty, like uh, um, the physicians of uh, uh, from the author's uh, department like medicine, if the patient have uh, this positional, uh, postural uh, hypertension, he may uh, feel the dizziness and all this. If the, he has a central lesions, you have to consult the neurophysicians to solve the problem of the patient. So once you have a benign proximal positional vertigo, um, it, is a, it is some specific point in the history that you will catch then you can perform uh, some physical examination in the clinic, same sitting, that will give you a boost to your diagnosis. And then in the same sitting, you can do some maneuver, physical maneuver to settle down these conditions of vertigo to the patient. So I am, I am myself usually very happy to have a patient who has an element of positional vertigo. Okay. Uh, then we have to see what it is. Uh, um, as uh, we start before, we have to see the vestibular system, the system which uh, make us stable, okay? So, as you know, it is, has a three semicircular canal and the uticle and the saccules, which is called the otolinth organ, otolinth. Otolinth means they have a stone which help them to get the information with the tilting of the body and the head and they send this information to the cerebellum and then it makes the sense of what is going on with the body and do the appropriate response to tackle with the new position of the body, okay? So this is all about the vestibular system, okay? So here we can see the vestibular system, three semicircular canal and the uticle and the saccule. Okay, vertical saccules have the, uh, on the neuroepithelium, sensory neuroepithelium, they are stone. So when the body, the head bent, they bent more rapidly and give this more rapid information to the brain about the new position of the head in relation to the body or the gravity. Okay, okay, here it is, here it is, the sensory neuroepithelium in the vertical and the saccule, which is called the macula, macula, okay? Here you can see the hair cells, okay, attached to the nerve fibers, and the, the hair cells are embedded into a gel, and the gel have the stones, high density um, uh, particles, and when one, uh, when one move from one body to the other positions, like this in the second picture. So this um, macula, uh, the nerve fiber in the macula bend in that directions and because of the otolith, it bend more frequently and it drags the nerve fiber, the kinocilium into that direction and it activate. It activates that nerve fiber and this information is carried out by the vestibular nerve to the brain. So this Otolith have a function in the macula of saccule and uticle. So, so we, what is the pathology? These are the carbonate crystals here you can see in an other, other pictures. So it is at rest. When, uh, when the body change, when the head change, this gel move to that direction against the 
influence of the gravity and the autolit help them to uh, go more more efficiently more rapidly because of their weight okay so here it is doing the normal function the autolith so what is the problem here the same picture i am showing you how these uh, stones drag the kinocilium the nerve fiber into uh, uh pro into a uh, into a place that they can uh, very uh, fast get depolarization okay okay here you can see the neuroepithelium the the sensory organ of the uh, uh, balance in the semicircular canal that was in the utricle and saccule and this is the semicircular canal it is called the macula cupula sorry cupula that was the macula and this is the cupula and it has no stone no stone in the gelatin of this uh, uh, cupula covering the um, sensory fibers okay because here uh, uh, the the force which them uh, which make them bend is the circulation of the endolymph that is f uh, that is sufficient so there it is not the circulation it is the it is the uh, stones present which make it more rapidly to functions okay so the semicircular canals have cupula which have no stone the macula of the uh, saccule and the uticals have the stones there to help to give information to the brain because of their high uh, density they bend more efficiently the fibers there okay so where is the pathology here you can see here the cupola is bending because of circular movements of the endolymph into the semicircular canal okay so what is happening in the benign positional vertigo okay with the aging or with some accidents this uh otolith get shedded from this their usual place of mutical and saccules and they goes because the endolymph is continuous here with the semicircular canal with the uticals and the saccule into the membranous part uh, uh, portion of the vestibule because there is two portion bony and the membranous so endolymph is present in the membranous and this is continuous this flow is continuous with the utricle and saccules and with somehow because of trauma because of uh, aging uh, atrophical changes in the inner ear these otolith high density particles goes from this usual position of the utricle and saccules and goes to, to uh, attach to the cupola in the semicircular canal which is where it is not needed or they goes into the endolymph of the semicircular canal so it is not needed there but now once they are there what they are causing because of their high density they give in one of the right or left ear they give more rapid flow of the more rapid uh, um, tilting of the cupola which have the nerve fiber than the other side than the normal side so this misinformation is perceived by the cerebellum as a abnormal abnormal so the patient start feeling of dizziness okay this is the pathology okay we'll go further so how we will define this one we so benign poses proximal positional vertigo <coughs> is this defined as an abnormal sensation of motion that is elicited by the certain critical provocative position okay all the vertigos are get worse with change of position when the movement of the head but this benign positional is only started when there is a certain critical position of the head then the patient start to feel the vertigo 
problem okay in between the if we not acquiring that positions critical positions on that the patient have the feeling if we not acquire that position anymore the patient may not have this vertigo okay <clears throat> it is one of the most common cause of vertigo so it's uh, i think it is lucky because you it's a, you can get an uh, diagnosis in your one sitting one sitting of the patient in your clinic and even that you can treat him with a single sitting so it, it is the most common most of the patient with vertigo have the diagnosis of benign positional vertigo um, as uh, statistically we can see the frequency is 64 per 1 lakh okay and uh, it is more common in uh, women and usually start in the age of the 50s plus okay but in young pupils if we can if we can find the benign positional then there is a um, history of we can find a history of head trauma because with the head trauma this otolith shattered from the usual position of the circular and neutral and goes to the semicircular canal and giving the symptoms okay and this is the uh, usual picture again i am showing to you this is the otolith you can find on the macula of the utricle and saccule and once they go into the semicircular canal they cause the symptoms because of their high density then to the um, endolymph and then this distortion on the one side of the ear and the normal ear on the second uh, uh, second side right or left side when this is perceived by the cerebellum this information is a new one this is a distorted one and the cerebellum perceives it as a with the symptoms of nausea and presented with the nystagmus the sign of the vertigo is nystagmus okay one can see the abnormal movements of the eyes during the feeling of the patient while he has this vertigo okay so there are many causes uh, some of the time it is it has no causes but we postulate it's that any infections nearby any trophic changes any um, uh, insufficiencies any tumor um, uh, and uh, any nearby structures which restrict the movement of the head and which is uh, to the normal when we are uh, doing this and some pathology like cervical vertigo cervical spondylosis can cause uh, some problem with this okay so this is the some causes of this disease and but most of the cases it is idiopathic we cannot find a cause of this um, problem so if we uh, usually when we uh, have a patient with the uh, uh, feeling of vertigo uh, we start with the history uh, and uh, usually we found that it is typically sudden many patient wake up with the condition noticing the vertigo while trying to sit up suddenly thereafter um, the tendency for positional vertigo may extend for days to weeks occasionally for month or years in many the symptoms period periodically resolve and then occur okay so it is uh, sometime suddenly when they start uh, to move in the morning they feel a sudden onset of vertigo and it usually settle uh, out within less than a minute why because this uh, once with head movements the otolith will move and when they settle down in the endolymph the the, the problem of this abnormal sensation from uh, disease side will settle down but whenever you acquire that position it will again move the otolith into the endolymph and give the abnormal sensation again you feel feel the vertigo spell so this occurs suddenly it is related to us uh, our specific uh, position of the body while lying down or waking up or sitting down in the bed or rotating in the bed like this because usually it is involved the posterior canal 
posterior canal okay so from the juticals and the saccules the otolith goes into the most depending part of the uh, semicircular canal and is the posterior canal okay so when we lie down and these otolith from the juticle can go there slowly settle down there when we wake up early in the morning with a sudden movement they they comes out from there and drag the endolymph and and the and, and with the endolymph the uh, nerve fibers with the sudden movement gets stimulated uh, more than the in comparison of the second side because there's a there's a mismatch if the both sides are stimulated both vestibular canals are stimulated on the right and left sides uh, same way the brain will catch it is a normal there's no conflict but if there's a conflict one side is moving more because of autolith and the second side uh, second side is even the normal but the the brain pick up it is a mismatch there's something going on the one side so it will perceive it will present like a feeling of dizziness okay physical examination the usual findings of ear are normal okay the general physical examination is normal okay so one test which we can perform in the clinic which is characteristic of the benign positional vertigo is the helpike test dix helpike test so it is uh, abnormal it is positive in this patient while the other all neurological basic tests are negative okay and this test positivity is considered as a pathognomic okay laboratory test uh, usually normal we don't have to go if we find the uh, very specific history and the cell pike test positive and even the imaging is not required if it is you have a benign positional vertigo because we, i will tell you benign posi positional vertigo can be central can be central okay this perception of a positional vertigo can be central but it is very rare okay and dix helpike test even differentiate between the central and the peripheral cause of this positional vertigo and the third thing is that the central causes of positional vertigo have other symptoms related to the brain pathology like they have a more of ataxia they have a more of a weakness of the body okay headache like this so uh, it is different from the um usual position that the patient patient is normal in between the attacks he is absolutely normal he has no neurological signs and uh, until he had that position he feels all right without any uh, any neurological symptoms and that dix helpike test is positive so you don't have to go all the investigation go for the dix helpike test and it will give you some most probable diagnosis of positional vertigo related to the semicircular canals presence of uh, otolith in the semicircular canal okay what is uh, what is the test is we can perform it uh, within one or two minute and it was by the uh, dix and helpai in 1952 it is the clinical pathognomic for positional vertigo okay uh here in the picture we can see we uh, we take the patient on the coach in the clinic and we bend the head why we bend the head because we want to test that uh, side uh, of the vestibule vestibule okay and then we suddenly take this patient down uh, uh, tilting his head down from the edge of the bed to make a depending position we want that the, if the otolith are present there this are dislodged from the their usual position in this position they can go into the posterior semicircular canal and give the symptoms the patient will perceive the symptoms and we can uh, we can uh, observe the nystagmus okay so take the patient there and uh, wait for some time wait for the symptoms or sign to develop and then took the patient back 
to the sitting position and in the position uh, the patient may again recur the symptoms because now the otolith move from that positions abnormal position again to the usual position and in that in that process they drag the endothelium more than to the other side and this mismatch of this endolymph um, uh, flow will give the sensation of vertigo okay So I will read for you. This is called CRP. Uh, performed by rapidly moving the patient from a sitting position to the supine position, with the head turned 45 to the right. If we are doing for the right here, after waiting approximately 20, 30 seconds, the patient is returned to the sitting position. If no nystagmus is observed, the procedure is then repeated on the left side okay but sometimes the patient have bilateral it is rare to have the bilateral but sometimes the patient have this otolithiasis on the other side so if we uh, haven't have on the one side go for the other side and do the same thing on the other sides left side okay So again, you can see. You can read how I am sending you this uh, presentation. You can see uh, how this is performed. We what we have to take care of the neck of the patients, and then how much seconds we have to we have to uh, um, uh, wait for the some seconds to the symptoms and sign to develop. And this take only for the both side uh, one or two minute only, and it can be performed in your settings, uh, clinical setting. So if you uh, okay, what will find uh, you will find on help pack test, you can see the nystagmus, uh, which have a fast component and the uh, and the slow component. Okay, uh, it's a latency that it takes some seconds. Before the patient in this position of head have started to feel the nausea and we can observe the nystagmus because this latency period is required because of the movement of starting of the movement of the otolith, which gives us a, a, a problem with the flow of the endolymph. It usually have reversals of the symptoms and sign upon return to the upright position because now the otolith high gravity particles are going into the Uh, return position into the backward position, and but in doing this, they can again uh, hyperstimulating the sensory organ there, which is the cupola, and response decline upon repeated uh, provocation. Why? Because now um, with the repeated uh, uh, moving of this otolith, some of them uh, shattered here and here, scattered here and there, and the response is declining because now. Some of them have settled somewhere in the portion of the vestibular system, and they are uh, with the repeated uh, and this help pike maneuver. The response is not as in the very brisk in the first one. Okay, these are some of the characteristics. So, what to do? You can see three these three balls. This uh, game is only uh, we have um, now. You have so many games in the computer in your. In your uh, um, mobiles, so only we have portable uh, came in our area was this to make these three balls to go into the center. Okay, so this this is the same we have to do in this repositioning the scattered otolith into the utricle of the saccule. So what movement we have to make to make them go into the Position where they will not stimulate the semicircular canals. So, this is looks to be difficult in a person uh, we which we are not seeing, but the pupils have developed some maneuvers, some maneuvers in the in the positioning of uh, the neck to take all the otolith from the semicircular canal again into the usual position of the utricle and saccule. Okay, how this perform? We will see. Okay. Uh, 
uh, treatment management usually in some patient is started and is settled down within a month. So watchful waiting, uh, vestibule suppressant medication, it will not work because with the certain uh, sudden movement of this otolith uh, cause so much disturbance of the vestibular system that the vestibular suppressant will not work so rapidly. So if it is not settling down, we have to have the canal lit repositioning. The canal lit repositioning procedures is a CRP is are simple and non-invasive office treatment that is designed to cure in one to two session. This therapy in experience hand has a success rate of more than 95% for the patient of the BBB. It means that if you know the, if you have practiced this uh, CRP procedures and you are expert in it, in 90% of the patient, the, uh, the symptoms settle down. Uh, over the times of the decades, two major procedures, the Apley maneuver and the Simon maneuvers are very well established and involve movement of the head to rearrange dispersed particles, which are the otolith, okay? So this is like, uh, uh, Apple maneuver is like a uh, help pike maneuver, but it uh, help uh, help pike maneuver only uh, sh uh, performed to see the movements of the otolith into the semicircular canal. The Apple maneuver is the extension of that. You have to bring that uh, otolith from the semicircular canals to the uticals. Here in the center, you can see with the different positions, for starting from the one, if you can read all this, taking to the position like the help pike maneuver, and if it is positive on the help pike that the patient have this feeling of dizziness and you can see the, observe the stage segments, then proceed further. In that position of the depending head position, you have to rotate it to the other side, okay? the head is rotated to the other side and then the full body is rotated on the other sides and here you the center see with that uh, every movement of this body movement the otoliths are going from that positions of the semicircular canal through the semicircular canals curve again into the uticals and this uh, every uh, setting of new position is rapidly performed and entire sequence is repeated until no next checkbus can be observed. You can do it once, then you can go it second time until you cannot perceive nystigmas and the pers person is not feeling the dizziness, okay? So if the symptoms are uh, not settled down with these maneuvers, uh, we have to go for the surgery. And what we have the surgical option is the singular neurectomy. Singular nerve is the nerve of the vestibular uh, nerve uh, branch which supplies the posterior semicircular canal because in most of the cases the, the semicircular canal posterior one is involved. So this nerve fiber to the posterior uh, nerve um, sensory uh, epithelium can be uh, denervated this position by the neurectomy by the by the cut of the singular nerve okay this is a simple procedure and uh, but we have if the patient is not settling and is a, a debilitating type of vertigo he cannot perform the work whenever he is tilting uh, his positions of the head he is getting severe episode of this vertigo sometimes they you, uh, they can be fell down, they, sometime it can give to the occupational accidents. So and we have to do something. The other options are, uh, uh, logical one is the posterior canal occlusion, okay? If we, if we occlude the posterior canal and it has no much uh, flow of the endolymph over the time, so no sudden movement of the dragging particles there, then the brain, the cerebellum will understood that the, there is no information on the right side. I have to rely on the 
on the movement of from endothelium from the left side and it make them match with the information from the eyes and the joint and this settle down with the time. And the, and the logic of this posterior canal occlusion is to stop the benign positional vertigo by collapsing the posterior canal, immobilizing the movement of the particles through the canal. This is this procedure is performed through a standard mastoidectomy. If we open the mastoid uh, process, and then we can found the posterior semicircular canal on the medial wall. We can open it with the drill, okay, and occlude it with some material. So th th there will be no movements of the endolymph because of the pressure of this occlusion and there is no movement of the endolymph and give no information to the brain. If there is no information of the, uh, to the brain over, the, uh, over some time, the brain will exclude the information from this side because there is now, he understands there is that it, it, I have to rely on the other vestibular system and other, the balance, other balancing systems like the eye, the proprioceptive uh, information. And uh, if it's not settling, we have to uh, 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 think about the labyrinthectomy or vestibular neurectomy. We have to remove the vestibular nerve. It depends on the symptoms of the patient. Okay, if it's not settling and he have a debilitating type of uh, disability with this, we have to go to, uh, we have to make the balance of what we can do uh, to make the disease process better. This is what is called the recommendations. Recommendations are always that you have to cure the patient, but the cure will be not devastating than the actual symptoms are. We have to cure, we have to give him relief to somehow, although the surgical procedure, the medical approach have some um, side effects, but the weight is more towards the uh, treatment. If we not do the treatment, the, the patient condition is more worse and the disability is more. Okay, this is the, uh, we have opened the um, mastoid cavity, okay. Uh, this is external aortic canals, we indicated there, and here you can see the semicircular uh, canals there, okay. Horizontal and the posterior semicircular canal, with the facial nerves going in its canal uh, into the anterior part. So we can open this, the bony part of this um, posterior semicircular canal and in between the post, uh, bony canal and the membranous canal, we have to put some uh, material to occlude the flow of the endolymph because uh, by the pressure. Because if there's no movement, then no uh, sensation will go. And the, uh, the neuroepithelium will not stimulate it, the nerve fiber will not stimulate it and this over the time the brain will compensate the new conditions of this and, and use this side around because the, the problem is coming uh, because of the sudden movement of this uh, particles and every time the brain feel the mismatch. So once this ear become close to giving the information, the cerebellum will compensate this and the patient may not have the perception because there is no flow of the uh, flow of the endolymph more breaks because of the presence of otolith. Okay, this was the uh, uh, singular neurectomy. Okay, here you can see the, uh, I will tell you the occlusion of uh, the flow of the membranous endolymph. So the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery Foundation diagnosed give the diagnostic criteria for um, benign positional vertigo, uh, which is the history. And the patient report repeated episodes of vertigo with change in the head position. All the vertigo get worse with the head movement, but this vertigo of benign positional vertigo uh, occurs with the head movements. It starts with the head movement. It initiated with the head movement. The patient before is not uh, have vertigo. It started with the head position. The physical examination, we have this, that, that, that these patients have Dick's help by test positive. If this it is like this, the patient have a, his, a specific history, the on examination, Dick's help by test is positive, and then uh, we can safely diagnose that this patient have benign 
it means not malignant, it is not a, a grave pathology, proxismals, it's coming in episodes briskly and position, it's related to the position and the patient have the feeling of vertigo. So if we follow this uh, and uh, uh, this is common cause, get uh, better with your this one sitting, uh, clinical sitting, that it is blessing for you and very satisfactory. And the patient uh, don't have to go in many uh, unnecessary investigations and referral to the others, okay? Um, but you know that these patients have to be followed, that their conditions are settling down or it's not settling down, then you have to see the other causes of uh, positional vertigo, which could be sometimes the central one. And then you have to go for further investigations and consult the neurophysician. Thank you so much, dears. If you have any query about this, any problem you cannot understand, you have to many, many uh, videos there, um, animated videos which will give you a clear picture of what is going on, what we have to perform. You can consult your books and referral book, but you have to understand because this common disease means common uh, and it can present to your clinics uh, uh, more uh, commonly, okay? So you should have a knowledge to give the relief to the patient. Thank you so much.